Okay, and now we are going on to our next session. And I'm happy to introduce, Jim, are you on? I am, can you hear me? I, yes, I can hear you. Jim McGoff, who's the co-founder and director of Edgewood Medical, who's gonna lead us in a discussion with Michael Hughes on keeping patient identification secure throughout the continuum of care. Go ahead, Jim. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, I guess, depending on where you are, good evening around the world. Jim McGough, uh, uh, Hit Lab Breakthrough Alliance uh, board member, happy to be here interviewing Michael Hughes from Duality. Du uh, Michael, are you there? Can you hear me? I am and I can. Uh, good day. How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. Thanks uh, for joining us today. Uh, we had a chance to chat briefly about Duality and I was just like, wow, this is one of those companies I wish I had thought of five, 10 years ago, solving a, a big problem. Uh, and it really has some interesting applications for healthcare innovation. So Michael, maybe you could just tell us real quickly a bit about yourself, your role I mean, and Duality and, and what problems you're solving. Sure. Um, so th thanks for your time, everyone. My name is Michael Hughes. I'm the Chief Business Officer uh, at Duality. Um, <clears throat> The, the, the challenge that duality is focused on solving is enabling collaboration on sensitive data, right? So what we provide is a data collaboration platform that allows organizations to, to share data, to collaborate on data in a privacy preserving way. Um, and I say that is, and people say, well, what, what exactly does that mean? It means that data sets that you were, were previously not accessible within your organization or across organizations due to regulatory or privacy concerns now can be made available so that you can begin to actually analyze that data to do some amazing things. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, the, the, the macro level is that what we facilitate is the means by which you can encrypt a data set. Uh, let's call it, let's say genomic data. And you can encrypt another data set that may be within your organization or outside of your organization, maybe it's clinical data, and combine that data together, which previously was not allowed, right, because of all the privacy concerns, to compute on that data. Maybe you want to perform some level of statistical analysis on it. Maybe you want to train a machine learning model on it. And the out, that is done in an encrypted fashion and delivers an encrypted results uh, that is never capable of revealing individual level information or intellectual property that may be contained in that data set. Got it, Michael. So I guess it's just everybody's information. You were one of the Breakthrough Alliance uh, challenge winners at the end of 21 and uh, really impressed uh, the global community. Can you just tell us more about maybe since then or what, like for the health uh, tech innovators, like what areas you guys have been focusing on, maybe abstract uh, 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 something that might be of interest. There's so many different groups that are listening in today that might be. Yeah, perfect. I'll, I'll use a couple examples because we were finding that um, the, the healthcare world is one that drastically could use this, uh, is interested in this technology because of the fact that it has the, the real potential to improve patient outcomes. Um, and improve quality of care for people that may be in a hospital system, right? So an example of that, a couple examples is we conducted a genomic-wide association study with Dana-Farber that where we were seeking to identify generic variants across patients that associated with a particular trait that could lead to a certain disease. So what we were design, well, the design principle was to help understand complex diseases where genetic and phenotype data are combined and what that did was it, uh, it yielded results 30 times faster than alternative state-of-the-art methods, getting to how I can fix this issue um, uh, with this individual. Um, another example is this concept of real-world evidence, which helps improve uh, accuracy by combining data sources to look for evidence needed to solve critical health problems. Okay, well, what our technology is helping data sciences do is to easily target the right population for clinical trials, right? So therefore you're able to fill the clinical trial uh, faster, right? And then identify specific individual treatment protocols uh, that, that are to help those that are in need. 
Uh, a third example, right, just to kind of touch on, on many is identifying non-adherence, right, to following instructions on when and how often to take med uh, medication. Non-adherence is a, is a big problem, but there are many reasons why somebody might not be taking their drugs. Maybe they can't afford it anymore. Maybe they forgot. Maybe they don't have access to a car and can't get to, uh, to the pharmacy. What if there is the means by which you could look at different data sets? Are they getting their prescriptions refilled uh, on time? Are they getting them not just refilled, but renewing the prescription when it needs to be renewed? Little things that are sensitive data that sit in disparate data sets that now you actually can bring together to answer some complex questions. Again, in this one, a simple example, but an important problem. Thanks, Michael, for giving us some kind of an overview of some of the, the problems that you are uniquely qualified to support the innovation with. One question is like, just for the opportunities that some of the people might be thinking about, is it best, I mean, you're the chief business officer, is it to, to have a, someone with a business problem and help, and, and you guys can help them sort that out? Or is it the data scientists that should understand some of the unique advantages of your platform and system? Just curious, what, what, what kind of opportunity or collaborations are you looking for? And what kind of people would you like to have uh, reaching out? Yeah, great, great example. So we've recently formed a partnership with a leading medical center in Israel that is enabling privacy enhanced access to their high quality clinical data. So just as a, for instance, if you're interested in analysis or access to you know, high quality clinical data in a privacy protected manner, reach out, right? If you have a medical center that uh, is interested in making their data accessible to partners, we're currently working with a federal government agency that actually collects a large body of data about virology that they are actually doing this. They're making their data accessible to, to researchers without actually giving them access to the raw data. So these researchers are actually able to run uh, machine learning models or statistical analysis against this data set without understanding the underlying data itself. So, so either side of the equation, I think would be great, Jim. And I think I just have one question just came in. If the analyst data scientists can't see the source data, how do they check, validate the result of the analysis? Ah, okay. So with, within the data science world, there's the need to be able to explore data to understand is the data set even worthwhile, right? Um, we actually provide the means by which you can explore the data to gain insights, to understand that, yes, this is a quality data set that actually meets my needs for the research that I, I may be performing. And then as a result of that, once that, that evaluation has been, a simple example is, do we actually have any customers in common, right? And I want to understand before I actually join this data with, with my data, I want to understand that simple example. Well, the answer to that question, by definition, if I do it in the raw, I get to see all of the data itself. What if there's the means by which I can look at these data sets, determine that, ah, you actually have 50% common customers uh, without actually revealing anything specific. So there's the ability for you to actually explore to know that the data is, is significant and then perform your analysis on it afterwards without revealing the raw data itself. Got it, no, that's, that's great. And I think I'm not sure, at least if we have time for one more question or for how we do on time, just one, one question, just going back to dualities, I think you brought it up in the overview at the beginning, but just some people might be asking like, what is it unique like about this ability to keep data you know, private and de-identified and so forth, just so folks understand like why is it that duality is like the, the, the big player that's emerging in this space? Oftentimes, even though you de-identify data, there's been numerous situations in which there's been proven by adding incremental data to de-identify data, you were able to re-identify. The world that we live in by encrypting the entire data set, it is impossible to actually get to any level of detail that allows you to identify an individual contained in that data set. So it is, according to regulators, uh, not identifiable um, because it hasn't been de-identified. Gotcha. Okay, I know it's a big issue, but I think, uh, Lisa, I think we're at time here, but uh, Michael, thanks so much for your sharing the progress and impact that Duality is making. We'll, we'll, uh, you can reach out, both of us, I believe, they'll send our LinkedIn uh, uh, connection points, but any last points, Michael, just to, if people want to reach out, uh, before we yeah, send please, it back. Please, if there's interest in learning more, just reach out to us. Happy to have a conversation.
Thank you very much for the time. I appreciate it, Jim. Appreciate it, Lisa.